everybody, welcome back to a new video. Luke here from Zeus Capital as always. So in this one, I'm going to be going over the CFT report on the official CFTC.gov website. very important that we understand this because you know, it gives us as much favor insight into what the smart money are really doing um now you obviously can go ahead and look up things and um you probably heard about it before um but this is showing you pretty much how to use it obviously that'll cover a bit more in depth about the co2 report itself uh, just so you get a quick understanding to what it is um but i'll put something in the description that'll help you understand it a bit more better um and i'll link you to some websites in which you could you know find useful to help you and um further your knowledge on co2 report right so in short i'm going to be explaining what it is so the co2 report is published once a week by the united states government one of the good things that the government actually does for us now and it simply pretty much could just contains it well it breaks down into three categories of people operating in the market the first group called the commercials these people actually use and produce the commodities so for example growing wheat uh, and for the second group, it's used, um, well, it used to mostly be people like us, but trading with much larger quantities. But in today's markets, it's really just the funds. And there is a lot of funds now trading, and they're primarily just trend followers. Um, and the third group is the average trader. That's called the non-reportable positions, or quote-unquote small speculators. So in short, it's large spec, small spec, and the commercials. And those are the three groups. And the important group to us is the commercials, and those are the ones that we need to be focusing on and following their steps, because obviously they're the big players in the game, right? So, and it'll be, it'll, it will, um, it's called non-commercial on the actual website, and I'll now show you how to access it now. So once you're on this website, it's cftc.gov, all you have to do is go over to market data and economic analysis, and from there you have to scroll down, well not scroll down, but just try and find commitment of traders, COT, and then just scroll down, you can go ahead and read all this, it's absolutely fine, um, you know, why not, more knowledge the better I guess. And there is ways you can obviously access history um, in terms of data, like how, you know, what it was like last week, the week before, um, but if you're in my members group, on discord i do have a google document that will give you access to you know pretty much the updated uh, co2 report data i guess and this is something i cover in my weekly forecasts so you know if you're in the group then you can listen to me break it down and in order to get access to that you just hit the link and head over to our website but i won't jump into that today so as you can see you've got loads of different boxes here you've got long for uh, long format short format etc etc you've got ag agriculture petroleum products natural gas electricity metals whatever now, all that we focus on is the current legacy report, right? You've got three different things here. You've got the, um, obviously, current trade and financial futures report, blah, blah. And then, obviously, you know, that's pretty much it. But if you just go down to find a box that says current legacy report, all that you look for is three boxes. Now, I'm assuming that you trade currencies only and gold, right? Because that's what I trade. Um, but if you obviously want to trade something else, like, for example, wheat, butter, milk, um, well, it's actually on here, but, you know, obviously try and find out which one you want to trade but for the currencies you want to open up chicago mercantile exchange and as you can see if we just scroll down even though it says buttermilk blah blah if you just scroll down the top one should be russian ruble and um, hope they said that right and as you can see it's this one here and then from there onwards is currencies you've got the swiss franc canadian dollar mexican peso british pound japanese yen and i'm sure there's a gap in there somewhere your fx and this is the slash british pound one but we don't look at that one we don't look at this one and then we look at this one, Brazilian Real, and then New Zealand Dollar, um, South African Rand, and then that's pretty much it for that one, right? It's got Bitcoin as well, but I don't look at the CO2 report for that. And then for like gold and silver and other things like that, all you have to do is find the Commodity Exchange Incorporated, which is this one here. And then let's just open this one. Yeah, you've got silver here, you've got copper, and you've got gold, which is obviously very actively traded, right? So... Uh, don't worry if you're wondering what the hell are all these i'll be explaining to you that shortly and then for the us dollar you have ice futures us and all you've got to do is just open that and scroll down until you find the us dollar uh, as you can see here us dollar index and that'll show you for the us dollar because it's not on the currencies one it's on this one okay so you should have three things open and obviously unless you don't trade gold then you just go ahead and close that and which i'll do that for well this video and um i'll just leave these ones open for now okay so again if we just look on the position categories and the statistical categories so obviously we've got the um well we just found the russian we'll do this one so we've got the long and we've got the short and we've got the spreading 
little spreads, right? And in short, all that the long means is this is the number of traders that are long in the market. And for sure, it's the number of traders that are short in the market. And then for spreads, this represents the number of offsetting positions in a particular trader category. And remember that long and short represent any remaining positions after the offsetting. And then for the statistical categories, obviously uh, what you got down here is the, you know, all of these things and what they are. And this here is your position size, right? This is obviously the difference, but we don't, we don't look at the spread. We just look at the long, short, these two, these two, these two, um, these two. So this here is your position sizes. So as you, as you can see, we're focusing on commercial, right? So they are net bullish on the Russian ruble, just based off this data. Um, and then this one here is the changes in position from the previous week. So, you know, from the previous week, they had, well, they added 710 positions and added 129 one, positions, right? And obviously if it was a minus, there'd be a minus there. Um, so you've got the position size, the position size changed from the previous week. So the differences from the previous week. And then obviously this third one here is a percent of open interest represented by each category of traders. Um, so obviously you've got 55 and 16.4 in this one. So pretty much what they're saying is they're not bullish. And to keep things simple, you, you look at is the higher prices. So for example, if this one's got 16, this one's got, you know, 30, then what's it going to tell you that they're bullish, right? There's more buyers. Okay. And then number of traders in each category. Again, we don't really need to focus on this. Something if you, if you want to, then I guess it's up to you. Um, but it, you know, it's pretty much in a word itself. It's number of traders in each category. So, you know, you got 38 for the long and nine for the short. So it's, you know, it's completely to you. But all that I look at is pretty much just position size. And I like to look at the percentage because um, obviously the percentage of open interest for it does really matter. Um, and obviously I like to keep track of what's changed from the previous week. So for example, if they, if we see like such a significant increase in changes, then, you know, that'll obviously reflect off the market. If you see like the, for example, the pound yen, it rallied on a Thursday. Was there, you know, a reason for that, right? So you're going to see the report and you can see that they're actually pumping positions into the market, blah, blah, right? Um, obviously there's a little slight delay in terms of, you know, the weeks in which we explained from the last video. Um, but you know, it is very still advantage because if, for example if there's a market reversal about to happen potentially then you can you know in terms of structure it may not be bullish just yet but in terms of the CO2 report it may be bullish if that makes sense um and we were previously bearish right so it just gives you that advantage i guess and it's just you know if you are short in position then you want to make sure that the the larger larger people are also in that short position as well if that makes sense all right um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it really, you know, there isn't really much to it. It's very simple All that you go all that you got to do is go to the cft.gov website market reports or more well, market data and economic analysis uh, Select the community of traders and then this page obviously here will allow you to obviously view the CFT report with You know choices to filter the date you can then um, well, I'm not sure if they do it actually nowadays, but they used to be um, I remember their old website it used to be like orange and this is <laughs> this is going back a well um, but it used to be orange and they used to have like a filter section in which you could filter um, Whether you'd like to pretty much just view the data in a longer short format and stuff like that But obviously it's a bit more simple nowadays and another thing to point out here as well on this page is um, You know open up the features only we don't need to focus on the options combined um, But like I said, you know if you trade a completely different market to me then you might want to open this You know so you know for as currency traders who like trade gold or whatever, you know US dollar, yeah, just focus on the futures only and open up the Chicago Mercantile Exchange for the currency pairs, Commodity Exchange Incorporated for the gold, you know, silver, and just other metals, uh, Ice Futures US for the US dollar. So, with that being said, guys, I'm gonna end the video here. Um, it's literally less than a 10 minute video explaining the CT reports, all you need to know. You can, you know, if you're still unsure on what it is, then you can read it up and there'll be much more in depth. But make sure you do read the description below as I'll go much more in depth. Uh, well, not much more in depth, but quite in depth uh, about this user report itself. Okay, guys. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.